or at least used to have 2800 at some point during this year. What you're talking about is there's two qualifiers for the candidates tournament by rating, and I believe the current front runners there are Wesley So and then Fabiano Carana with Vladimir Kramnik in close pursuit, but. For both these guys, it would be a bit of a long shot. Yeah, and uh, this position I've seen For before. E3. Yeah, because this is what Hikaru played against me in Moscow. This is some sort of weird anti-Grunfeld. He's yeah, trying to fight against D5. Yeah, it's become, it's become uh, popular at some point, maybe three years ago or so. I think Grishuk was the first one who introduced it at the very top level. Hikaru has beaten uh, Jan Nipomnishi in Zurich in precisely the B6, Bishop B7 subline of this. I just went for Benoni instead. And didn't really get a Benoni and was suffering and then was better. But uh, uh, yeah, that's a traumatic event. People are still asking me about this as well. Sorry, man. Not you. You are. I have no problems with you. But people. Oh, we'll get there. I do have people problem with problems with people in general. <laughs> Tell me about it. Yeah. And Maxine has problems with this position in general because he lost this position to Anish Giri, which kicked him out of the World Cup like a couple of years ago. I think you might have been up there. Um, but there, I believe he went d5, not e6. And, and this is what said. this is what Jan also played. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, today he is playing e6, d5. And yeah, this is obviously not going to be a refutation of the. And he's still taking with the knight. Ah, but I thought now you go e d. Yeah, I was a bit surprised by that because yeah, you would have thought that having played e6, which you don't have to, you could play d5 on the previous move, and not you know, there's no refutation. Why well, typically just goes bishop d2 here and yeah, saying, you know what, won, as yeah. long as you don't get knight d7, c5, I'm slightly better, so please free yourself. And now yeah. that c5 was looming, he takes maybe once b4, maybe once bishop c3. Yeah, this is very close to what he got against uh, Jan, and it looked very innocuous for a while, and then suddenly just looked horribly, horribly unpleasant for black, and was won by one, by white, by move 30. Also, if you're asking yourself, why not just play the King's Indian with d6? You can do that, but most Grunfeld players don't want to play d6, knight b7, e5. And the white setup is not ridiculous against the King's no. Indian. No, no, it's not, it's not horrible. Once again, it's not going to refute the King's Indian, but uh, it's playable. c5, do you go e4 here, or do you... Yeah, he does go e4. e4, and maybe even I was d5, wondering about d5. But then takes, takes knight f6. I think you probably go sometime bishop g5 first, which is what he's done. And... Uh, Queen somewhere, Queen, queen, c7, queen c7, c7 is the five, most right? obvious move, but then you do play d5. Takes, takes, Queen d6, and it becomes very, very sharp because it kind of hinges on whether white can immediately shift this queen from d6 or not. Looks like some theoretical Grunfeld almost all of a sudden. After yeah, very close takes. to some, you know, like so rook, one, rook b1 ones. Grunfelds or, or bishop d2 Grunfelds, yeah. Hmm. There is bishop f6 here if black wants it, but it's awkward. And MVL goes for queen c8, which is a bit of a strange choice to my eyes, because after d5 takes takes, you might have to allow d6. And generally, once it reaches d6, it becomes very annoying. And as for white, I think you need to play d5. I don't think you will get very far if you avoid it. If you go for tricks, then even if you take the pawn, you don't have much. Huh? That might also be knight of 6. Yeah, knight of 6 would be my, my guess. Yeah, Immediately creating counterplay against the entire center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he does go d5, takes, takes rook e8, and yeah, d6 immediately, I guess black plays uh, knight e5 or queen c6 first, he did play queen c6. Yeah, it, it, these positions are uh, very, very double-edged. Not only they're bad for black. But yeah, but they can, be, they can be, be seven. yeah, you need to be, which is why I was somewhat surprised uh, by the speed with which uh, MBL has done all this, because the stakes become very, very high here, you could just get completely lost very fast. One of my most cherished childhood memories is I once won a game with bishop f7, knight g5 check in this position. Yeah, queen e4, queen b3 looks tempting. Even taking and going bishop b5 looks very tempting. But there, I guess black might be in time with bishop takes e4 and bishop f5, so as not to lose immediately, I mean. Queen b3 wants queen f5, or what is it? Also knight e5, maybe. Knight e5 might be a good move there. Mm -hmm. So he does take rook, rook e4. I guess bishop b but what is he? what is he planning after bishop b5? Just knight of six, yeah, I, I've, yeah, I've forgotten this existed. On the other hand, if you don't lose straight away, this pawn gets rounded up in some positions, so... It's very difficult to sort of uh, play this perfectly on, on uh, short time. 
<clears throat> Do your Grunfeld players have like a special love-hate relationship with this past depot? More of a hate than a love relationship, but yeah, I mean, you you do get to these situations often enough to uh, to have a somewhat different approach to it than people who don't play the control. Still looks very very dodgy for black. I think you kind of have to go rookie six, otherwise you lose much. Maybe a six first though. But a six, a six is awkward. A six, there might be maybe some grabber. No, yeah, rook b six, but then maybe I can. Take and take on b7, and then rook, yeah, rook takes b5 even. Barely. <laughs> yeah, but, but but the problem is if you go rook e6, which is the first move that comes to mind, just saving the knight on f6, takes takes knight e5, is very very dangerous looking. Looks kind of lost. Sometimes black doesn't lose these positions, but uh, yeah, you and this already is on the board. After a6, the bishop will have to uh, like if you give white one more tempo to play rook g1, he played h6 though, not a6. The point stands though. Bishop h4, g3, but maybe knight h5. Maybe Maxim has actually calculated this. Uh, well, he's obviously calculated this, but maybe his calculation is uh, more precise. Knight h5 or knight e4. Knight e4 probably is better, yeah? I like knight e4. You're in time somehow. Yeah. No, but this is, as, as I was you know, trying to make a point, it is a matter of, of tempi here. Give White one more tempo somewhere and he will be completely winning because he will be able to stabilize. And the pawn on d7 will just be too strong. But here, yeah, bishop b3, you just go knight d5, I suppose. And, uh, or a6 first, but I, I, I wanted knight d5 for some reason. We can do it now. No, it's so there has been equal? a trade, yeah, there has been a trade-off. And uh, generally, as a, as a Greenfield player, I would, I would pick black here. Very because he, yeah, your bishops are your bishops are tremendous, and the pawn on b2 is potentially weak, and your majority on the queen side looks uh, you know a more rel relevant one, at least at the, for the time being, than the majority white has on the king side. And the trend is also your friend. Mm, yeah, I like I like that of four. <laughs> I think uh, white needs to try and kind of fight this con concretely. And yeah, Hikaru is using the fact that bishop b2, rook b1 will lose him the pawn, uh, lose Maxim the pawn on b6. But just pushing the g-pawn forward, yeah, this... Unique for a Grunfeld player to have his own pass d pawn. Hmm. Yeah, that doesn't happen every day. d3 wants bishop to do a check. Bishop h5 check and rook e1, yeah. He might be able to... Uh, I quite like how he approached this. It, it could have been so much worse. And knight d 5 is not a move you make easily because it connects the black structure. It gives black, you know, a, a number of tempi. E takes d5 and d4 and d3. All of the three moves were played with the tempo. But it was just, I think, better than the alternatives. Rook e5 are deep. Especially well, the, just the, bothering the, the bishop is stuck, yeah. Black is still better. I'm somewhat surprised that Hikar didn't take on e7. I think uh, going rook d1 is just a very... But here maybe you just... Yeah, it's difficult to make moves. You kind of have to play bishop c3 and hope you're not lost. Because you're in trouble here as well. The rook is going yeah, to no, in a lot of trouble. In a lot of trouble. Yeah, and this uh, looks like you know potentially a very played game and an important game for MVL. I don't. I don't see why he didn't play rook e2. I thought rook e2 was just winning on the previous move, but maybe he is just in control here. Well, not maybe. I mean, he's clearly uh, clearly is in control. Just king e6, d5, solidify your uh, control over everything. Mm -hmm. Or this. Yeah, winning a piece in two moves is never really a mistake. Oh. Bishop g2, so yeah. resourceful. Hikaru doesn't miss those uh, small chances, but even here you get the feeling that rook d3 followed, followed by c3. Yeah. Although after f4, white might be able to give up the bishop for two pawns. Mm -hmm. And then the game definitely continues, because uh, if you take the a pawns away, it's clearly a draw. And here white can try and, I don't know, to go for king h3, h4. Uh, yeah. By the way, is, you need to be a tremendous player to make it here with white. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. the defense Hikaru came yeah. up with. Uh, it's, it's happening at such a speed that we, are, we can't really stop and admire uh, Hikaru's play uh, you know, to the extent that he deserves. This feels might, like a draw, right? It might still be lost, but it's not, not, not easily won at all if, it, if it's won. King, push, yeah. Well, you might run out of moves, and it's a correct square, but yeah, it, it does feel like it might be a draw. I'm not sure. 
F5, F6 now. The pawn F6, no? I think the bishop, bishop E7 maybe, but, but maybe it was like a Tsuk Tsang because with the bishop on D8, why didn't have this option? Yeah, okay. Now it's a draw, obviously. And we all decided not to push it. Nice game. Yeah, nicely played game. Oh, when we can learn rook games. My favorite thing in the whole wild world. I normally blunder some rook a6 and then I lose, but if you don't do that, it's normally a draw. That's yeah, I don't think, think Vichy is losing this position. I think Vichy knows what he's doing. Well, Vichy is also white. Hang, hang on a sec. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, this, I think, is a draw. But now, I'm... after e7, it's not so hard. Yeah, but uh, rook f7 check, rook f... But then he starts giving checks from, from the a-file. Just in time. Yeah, this is just a clear draw now. Well, any move. Rook, a, can rook, a, go. One. Yeah, rook a1 mm. is, I think, the simplest one. Yeah, try draw has been agreed. There was also a draw in a game between uh, Wesley So and Vladimir Kramnik. Mm. Uh, Magnus won again against uh, Lev. Magnus means business. He and wants Magnus, those five whites. I don't know. I don't know if that was a sign of respect or anything. But against uh, Lev, he did not play one knight c3. Oh, he actually went played, for the other knight. He actually played something uh, very normal. Half serious. Yeah. yeah, half serious, and played knight b2 knight B2 here. Two. And then, uh, f from what seemed like a you know not a very tragic position for Black, just uh, uh, outcalculated left seemingly. Mm, where's the yeah. outcalculating business? It, it it comes soon. E4, yeah, like it's... here, I think Lev assumed that the bishop on c five is fine, but then Magnus played yeah yeah he played bishop before and after bishop takes f two just played queen e two. Ah, that's and, that's nasty. And, uh, judging by what happened later, there's just nothing here because b5 9 d6 i guess yeah even like b5 9 d6 why don't you go rook d8 here maybe e5 simply yeah, yeah. so yeah lev uh, thought maybe that you know pieces are exchanged everything is going sort of according to plan and then suddenly he was a piece down and totally lost <clears throat> and to nobody's surprise on the internets anish giri drew against fabiano carana fabiano told me that at some point they had a 17 game drawing street in classical chess but then Fabiano won a game and he was mm. he was feeling kind of bad about it that's probably not true but he did break that streak and and yeah this looks like a solid game let's check in with the games and the standings <laughs> 